Hey everyone, it's your girl Maddie here, aka Beaver Mosh. And today I'm joined by Miko of Cardinals Folly, who is about to set to, set on their U.S. tour. Uh, Miko, how are things tonight? How are? Uh, uh, thank you for joining me. Well, I'm stressed as fuck, but I think it's gonna roll on nicely. Like we got a big set of days like i think 13 days all the way from uh all the way from midwest to the east coast and back so it's uh it's the longest tour that cardinals folly has ever had anywhere so yeah so you're saying oh, you should be pretty exciting times yeah so you're saying 13 dates um when exactly is it kicking off and uh are you playing with any other bands Uh, the first date is we start 18th of May in Madison, Wisconsin. Cool. And the last show is 1st of June in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. So we go like Midwest to the East Coast and back meanwhile. Like we go all the way to DC, Washington, DC. Mm -hmm. And you... like all the way from, yeah. And uh, this uh, this tour of yours, you're supporting uh, your previous record, Live by the Sword, which came out last October. And I'm wondering, how has the reception to the, the album been? Oh, it's been very good. It's been yeah. very good. Like, yeah, I think the best album. And I think what we just lack is that we couldn't play the amount of shows to support the album upon the release mm -hmm. the way I would have to although it's been like five months so it's there's still good time mm -hmm. yeah um and when was the last time uh Cardinals Fowley has played the U.S. I was like uh December 22 we uh we, we played this festival in Wisconsin with the uh, Coven, the Jinx Dawson's Coven headlining, and we were like support to them. Awesome. And with four other sh with four other shows around Midwest, that was in December twenty two, like a uh, year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. That was great. Like I feel like we went back there, and that we've been booking this tour. It felt like it was pretty easy to set up the shows because we got some name around yeah around midwest yeah so you're saying you find a fan base particularly in the midwest part of the u.s why do you think that is well that's just a coincidence because that's where we got connected to at first that's where we, we we've always been playing in the u.s yeah that's the first time we actually leave the midwest and go all the way to the east coast <laughs> hmm. So that's like a sort of an adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to know what is it like as a band that's done as now to like go and kind of leave your country for a month and be in another one playing shows. Ask me again in a few months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we have like Cardinals Poly has been playing, of course, outside Finland a lot of times, but it's never been like this though. Yeah. Well, your band, you play doom metal, like a very traditional doom metal. And in my opinion, kind of looking out on the outside, <laughs> uh, that doom is a subgenre that doesn't have a ton of bands right now. I'm not saying no one is making like straightforward doom metal, but it's not as many bands as there are in, say, death metal or black metal. Any reason why you think that's the case right now, currently? Well, I think it's actually like, uh, if you talk to other people, they would take it for granted that it's going to be like this. But I uh -huh. do think, of, I do often wonder about it in my own mind, that why, why is black and death metal so sexy? <laughs> well... Well, in the end, all those bands are the same. Like to me, it's like you watch their logos, you listen to their music. Of course, there's good bands in every genre, obviously. Right. Yeah, but if you look at black death metal, it's sort of like it's always the same. It's like you look at it, 
it looks very similar. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, in Doom Metal, there's way more magic if you look at the quality bands. So the way it's the history of the, the history of Doom and the good bands that actually carry that torch onwards still. I think there's way more personality there. But that's just that's just my opinion. Sure. And I mean there's still like I said, there are still plenty of great doom metal bands, but it seems like we've we're not the the period of like Cantomass and Saint Vitus and those bands kind of being on the top, like that has come and gone. Like doom metal just kind of isn't at the top right now in terms of popularity. Yeah, well, I have to admit, maybe part of the reason why I do this is because to me that stuff never dies. Yeah. Like um I feel like like I've seen Saint Vibe just like three, four times in the last mm. ten years. Yeah. It's just it's just incredibly live. Oh like, yeah, it's great. Like timeless take. Like something that needs to be there. And I I feel like Cardinal's Folly is something that needs to always carry the torch of true doom on mm -hmm. Like if nobody else is gonna be well, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, you're 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 in Helsinki, you know, your your country, Finland. And from what I know about Finland, Finland is is known for having so many metal bands for a population. Um why is metal such part of the culture there? It is your question is not a bad one, but usually the answers are very cliched because it's yeah. always like we live up here in the forest. It's always dark most of the year. Yeah, it's always like we are very melancholic, laconic people. Um, I'm trying to find another answer. Sure, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure if there is one. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. Just <laughs> like. I think people in my country are very sensitive and artistic. Sure, but their but their social skills are terrible. <laughs> I love so, that. <laughs> to put all of this out through some channel, and it's way easier to be morose and melancholic than anything else because that's what we are. In. And now it's April now. Yeah, a few days ago, we had still like fucking heavy snow here. Now it's starting to be spring. Yeah. But I mean it's I guess it's pretty rough place. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I live in the I live in the north part of the US and we are supposed to be the cold part of the country, but today it was eighty degrees. So it's it's nothing like what you're what you're describing. Like. I mean, yeah, like also like I've spent a lot of time in the up in the up in the, up in the northern states. Yeah. But I know it's as cold as Finland. It's not <laughs> yeah. terrible. <laughs> well, so I, I guess I'm curious now that you're coming to the U.S. from Finland because it feels that like because there are so many metal bands in Finland that it's less quote unquote underground. Like here in the U.S., like extreme metal. You know, there's only it's only really seen and played in in very small rooms with a kind of a niche audience. Um, even though there are plenty of of metal bands, and that must is it is it kind of the same in Finland, or is there are the shows you know bigger? Do more people listen to you know your extreme bands, or is it still pretty underground there? I want to say that there's room for everything. Like, uh, for an example, yeah. in January, like two months ago, we played a show in a pretty small bar in Helsinki, and it was all fucking full of sold out, and people were crowd surfing on top of each other. And, like, yeah. this is not probably the typical Cardinals show because we're not like a very well known band. Yeah. But it's true that in Finland there's sort of a scene for everything. If if you look at how small the country is, uh, like we have lots of black metal shows, dead metal shows, even doom metal shows. Uh -huh. it's, it's not like 
it doesn't have, I mean, we don't have any room to expand here. Everybody already knows this stuff. But the people who are into it are really into it. And they're yeah. seen. For sure. Yeah. Now, looking uh, more into your music, you know, you draw lyrics from my understanding from like various sources of horror mm -hmm. literature and can general occultic themes. Is there any sources in particular you seem to draw a lot of inspiration from? It's kind of like it's kind of like always been the same. It's like where the traditions come from. Like I was into heavy metal, doom metal, classic doom, HP Lovecraft, pulp literature, like stuff like that. Occultism, of course, like. And also, like, Carmen's Fall is maybe a bit different in doom metal in the sense that it was never meant to be uh, such an appropriate band. We always like Bathory, we always like black metal, we always like I'm keep it a Bathory bit shirt right now. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, like, but that's for us was always essential. Yeah. That it needs to be. It's it's kind of it's kind of hard to say because I feel nowadays that I'm not sure people know what I mean, but I think when they see us playing, they know what I mean because we're trying to make the best best fucking metal music possible. Mm -hmm. But I know it's also old fashioned. Like we like Bathory. In solitude, Iron Maiden, of course, like, all the way from heavy metal, to black metal. I mean, I, just, I mean, believe me, it's just what we like. Yeah, what we fight through. I I look at kind of like the the thrash revival that like happened recently, like Municipal Waste and, and Power Trip, and that kind of um. And the way they just kind of unapologetically just adopt it, you know, the vintage, you know, Megadeth sound. And yeah. makes me think that I get what you're saying, but I, I still think that even with a younger audience, there's that, that appetite for those classic bands, you know, the vintage metal sound, just, just the old school isn't gone. People still love, yeah. That's also what we are lacking. And it's mm -hmm. funny because, like, this is in the end that I don't fully understand it because this is what appeals to people still. Yeah. It's also what nobody wants to do. Mm -hmm. So, what I, I don't know. I, I don't have the answers. I'm just doing what I like. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I respect the hell out of that. Like, I wish, you know, I wish more band kind of looked and said, this is the music I want to make, and I'm not kind of I'm not looking at you know what I can sell. I want to make music that I enjoy, and this is what I'm making. And if people want to hear it, yeah, they can have it. Like, in the end, like Carnival's Fall is not meant to be like a, a fucking slow and boring doom metal band. It's always meant to be like entertaining. Like I think yeah. our live show, I, I think our live shows are pretty fucking entertaining. So, yeah, well, let's we'll, we'll talk about that. So for generally for people who haven't seen your band and maybe want to catch a show when you come over here to the U.S., you know, what can they expect? A mix of heavy metal and doom with the fucking energy to play like, like, um, well, I'm terrible at reference because in the end, I don't think we are like anybody else. Yeah. We sort of play fast and slow and if you listen to our music, I think you can catch on. Like, if you like it and you get get on board with what you're hearing, you can probably also get that it's going to be pretty good live. It's like we're going with energy. Yeah. And will your set list, you know, will it focus primarily on the newer material? Or are you going to throw in some old tracks? Both. Like going with both, like some new, some new tracks and some old mm -hmm. stuff. Like, I know how to make a good set list. It's going to be a look. 
Yeah, well, what makes a good set list, in your opinion? It varies, but like, uh, for example, like when you go to another continent to play, which you don't do all the time, you're just going to bring out the best in you. Mm -hmm. So I think the new album is the best. So the best tracks from that, like Rider or Rye, Luciferian, and Last Last Year Two. And then the best, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to speak out every track on set list, but right, like please don't. <laughs> like all the all the classic tracks we found good during our history and shows we played, yeah. all the best of the new world. So we know how to do all the good stuff, all the yeah. best stuff, the best live stuff with high intensity. Mm -hmm. We're not a typical doom metal fan. Let's just go all out and fucking ride our guy. Yeah. And how, I mean, what, what, how do the, how do, in your experience, you know, audiences that come, how, how do they interact with your band? You know, how, how do they receive it? You know, you think of like, do, are is there ma? Do you know? Is, is it a big moss show? Is it more of a kind of a stoic, kind of more ritualistic um, experience? You know what? How do how do you, how does the audience kind of respond to what you're bringing to them? Well, it varies a lot. Yeah. You know, sometimes they really just go into some religious mood almost. Mm -hmm. You can sense that they get it like the way you get it. But this is what you think in your mind because you feel it out. And sometimes people are more stoic, which, in my opinion, doesn't really work with our music. But it's okay. Like this, what it is we've seen all kinds of crowds, and but we we've seen the impact that the music makes, mm -hmm. and it's that's what that's what keeps me going. Really, like yeah, great well... to see. It. It's like I don't care even in the end what they think. I just want to give my all and like even like lie on their fucking feet. <laughs> with my fucking bloody face that I pounded myself in the head with my bass guitar. It doesn't matter. If That's I know quite I an image. Nothing. <laughs> 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 But like that's not the point. I'm not, not trying to sound shocking or anything. Yeah. Just saying like you feel it out the way it's meant to be if, if it works. And I I have noticed that I think our band is particularly good live. It's actually better from live than from record. Yeah. Or from record. I have to admit. Well, and and I'm I'm also curious because your band, you know, Cardinals Folly is is not a new band. You formed in like 2007, you know, almost <laughs> almost 20 years. So I'm sure you've had time to really hone in, you know, the craft of like bringing this music live. You know, yeah. In any way, how can you can you kind of describe how your band has evolved over all these years? Ah, uh, it's 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 like a mental thing. It's like. Uh... Like I don't think, I don't think we are better players than we were yeah. like back. Then. But I think we are way more self confident. Okay. Like, like we're in. We we learn to do this thing that we have, and um, we sort of also understood that it's there's no greater magic behind it. It's just believing in what you do and doing it properly, because in the end, this whole world. Is full of bands that all do it properly, mm -hmm. but they all believe in themselves like we do. Mm -hmm. So it's like I know I sound very like uh, superstitious, but in the end, it's just that I have a really high belief in what I do. And I think that's if you like to live by the sword. Like the way I, I actually saw, I watched that video review that you did. So, I mean, watching that, I think, I think you got some of that madness that I have between behind my eyes. <laughs> I mean, I, I tried. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm saying, like, yeah. that's 
what I like. Yeah. Well, Miko, I I don't really have any more questions for you, but of course, before I let you go, I do want to let you kind of let my audience know where where can they find you know the date listed? Where can they find ticket? You know what works should they be looking if they want to see, catch your band live and that you come to the states? Sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, I, I was like, can you can you let uh, my viewers know? Um, First of all, like if they want to know well, what show, what places you're playing, where can they find all that information about the shows? Where can they find tickets? All that stuff. Okay, uh, I think I can tell you all the shows. Just give me a bit of time. It's we start on 18th of May from yeah. Madison, Madison, and then 19th we're in Indianapolis with a couple of great bands, Sonia and Wayfarer. Fantastic rap bands, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on 20th we're in Chicago. Mm -hmm. and is with uh, I don't remember the bands, but anyway, that's the date. On 21st on Ypsilanti, Michigan. 22nd on Youngstown, Ohio. 23rd on uh, Rochester, New York with Aura Druid, which is one of my favorites, actually. Mm. Well, you're going to New York after Michigan. That's kind of a, a big jump. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. You have yeah. to. <laughs> The trek is a trek. Yeah. <laughs> 24th, uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. 25th, uh, down in uh, Frederick, Maryland. 26th and 27th in Virginia at Roanoke and Richmond. And 28th at Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Drive north, and we we're playing in uh, 31st. Of May at uh, Saint Paul, Minnesota, and then uh, the first of June in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and that's well, the tour. You said thirty first of May. I mean, I'll I, yeah, I will be home in because that's where I'm from. So I'll probably have to come catch you out. Where are you where, where are you based on? Um, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So the next city, you know, <laughs> yeah. Saint Paul is right next to it. it. Would be nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's the last day of May. Yeah, that's when we're there. Yeah. Cool. Well, sick. Well, Miko, I had a lot of fun with the conversation. Thank you so much for joining me. And I uh no, I really no hope Yeah, and I really hope the tour goes great. I hope uh I hope people have a great time. Uh listeners, you know, I've heard I, I obviously I, I reviewed the record, I listened to it. I think the music is great. So uh if they're coming to your city or nearby, please go consider checking out a show and definitely go listen to the record uh live by the sword which came out last march um and hey thank you to my patrons and my name is maddie aka beaver mosh i'm signing off <laughs>